Greetings. Uh, this is Derek Ong with the continuation series of the uh, Smart PLS uh, using parts Smart PLS for structure equation modeling analysis and research. Um, now, one of the things that I have not um, uh, dealt with in my previous videos is this um, issue of common method variance uh, or common method bias. So. <clears throat> My next two videos are going to be discussing on this issue. Um, so basically what common method bias is, is that it is a self-reported biasness that may cause common method variance, which could result in inflated relationships between the variables. You know, kind of like single source um, um, items, or sorry, single source uh, data collection. When you ask the, um, for example, if you ask your uh, respondents, their performance, and then their perceived uh, 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 perform, uh, no, their, well, you can ask them about their perceived confidence in their performance and then their actual performance, you know, they can lie about it. But um, sometimes these things can be unavoidable, uh, uh, is unavoidable because you don't have that much time to collect data from multiple sources of people, right? So I'm just going to ask you, uh, or I'm going to teach you how to uh, check uh, proper measurement items can be used for model building, especially when you're doing uh, structure equation modeling. Um, there are a few uh, remedies that you can do. Now, some of it is procedural, uh, which means that you need to do this before you collect data collection. Uh, it will be always good to have these in mind uh, before you collect them. Or if, let's say, you haven't collected them, the, um, then uh, you will have to result in using some other methods, okay, which I will explain later. Uh, and um, all journal publications and even high uh, postgraduate thesis would require you to address this issue of common method uh, variance. Okay, so first three, you can do data collection. Uh, separating the independent and dependent variable data collection in different timing. Uh, this could at least help the um, respondents to focus on what they are answering at that particular time so that they don't have this influence of time uh, when they are answering your questions and it becomes uh, not reliable. Psychological separation, asking them something in between independent and dependent variable first before asking the dependent variable. Just throw in one or two questions inside in between that will be kind of like totally unrelated to the questionnaire, uh, which would at least give them a little bit of jolt so that they don't assume that they have to answer everything uh, according to a certain manner. Scale. You know that when you adapt scales, uh, uh, they don't come, or adapt items, they don't come with scales. So standardization of the scale can make things look a little bit same. Uh, but you can try by uh, employing a different scale for independent and dependent uh, uh, variables, maybe a five point for independent and a seven point for the dependent. At least this will keep things fresh and it will again ensure that your respondents uh, are not influenced by the differences in the scale or the uh, answering method. Grouping items in your questionnaire, try not to mix them up and give them a header for the context. Uh, again, this is to help them to focus and to answer more consistently. Now, uh, I do want to stress that uh, if only these measures are only available if you have not collected your data or if you are still in discussion with your data collection, um, sorry, your uh, questionnaire with your supervisor, uh, please, please, please uh, re uh, watch my next video before collecting your data or finalizing your questionnaire because there is something inside there on social desirability scale which you uh, should and uh, put in and um, it will help you with your questionnaire later on. Trust me, you will not regret it. Status quo remedy. Now, if you have run into problems where you have collected your data, you can still use these remedies, but I must warn you that these remedies, some of them are no longer acceptable in certain universities, but, you know, not Every university has the same yardstick, so you can still get away with some of these um, 
procedures. So one of it is called the Harmon single factor test, uh, whereby you're evaluating the amount of biasness inherent in the variance proportion of distribution of items. What you're going to do is you're going to take all the items in the EFA, including the um, uh, dependent variable, and check for the unrotated first factor, uh, making sure that everything is less than 50%. Yeah. Um, if that is so, uh, then it indicates that CMB is not a problem for the SEM, and you can use that. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. <clears throat> We're going to use our trusted uh, adoption data set in SPSS. Um, and as I mentioned to you just now, um, please watch the next video. I'm going to explain to you what this uh, SD1, 2, and 3 is. But for now, we're not going to use it. So um, go to your Analyze, Dimension Reduction on Factor. Um, click on everything from CP1 all the way up to TR3. Put it into your variables under extraction. Make sure you choose your principal actors factoring. Force the number of factors into one. Now remember, since there is no rotation, so keep it to no rotation, none. Unless you're doing factor analysis, then that's a different thing, but this is unrotated. I made a boo-boo with my first video, but it's OK. I got it right now, so press OK. Now, as you can see, the unrotated is 22.346, which means it's less than 50%. So this shows that uh, the uh, CMV is not a problem. Okay, And you can, of course, use uh, Potsikov and Orgon uh, as your main references when you want to talk about CMV. Okay, so please watch my next video, which I'm going to talk to you about more higher level um, statistical remedies. All right, thank you very much and see you.